introduce myself. My name is uh, Tom Marshall. And here's my card. And my students in university call me Dr. Tom, so you can call me Dr. Tom, or whatever you want to call me, but I would prefer Dr. Tom. There you go, folks. Thank you. There you are. I'm a university professor. I taught at Ohio State for many years. And then I went out to California to start a brand new engineering program. And uh, I came back to Ohio and started teaching with the engineering program this year at Mount Vernon Nazarene University. So we're happy to uh, host this event. This is Hunter Hall, part of Mount Vernon Nazarene University's campus. We have some auxiliary buildings here downtown and also uh, our main campus. So we invite you to come visit us anytime, anytime you want. Here we have some extra students. Dr. Tom, you want to have a seat? Come on in, folks, if you want. Even if you're not doing the Global Water Challenge, if you want to listen, that's fine. You can, you can stay here. So we're going to talk today a little bit about uh, Global Water Challenge. Has everybody already familiar with, the, with STEM and what we're doing? Does anybody need to have any more information about that? Do you guys want some more information about that? Well, this is, this is STEM Fest Knox, and you should have a packet that looks like this. Does everybody have a, a packet that looks like this? In that packet, there's a description of, of what we're doing, and uh, this is basically a competition. And who knows what STEM stands for? Yes, you. Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. Really good. Yeah, it, that's an acronym, isn't it? Do you guys know what an acronym is? It's a word that's made of the first initials of other words. Okay, we're going to have to give up some cards here for these students. If any family wants to donate a card, they can. Oh, wait, I have, I have two more. STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. You're right. And what I, I want you all to take notes, and so I'm going to take notes with you. Uh, that's what STEM stands for, science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm a scientist and a technologist and an engineer and a mathematician. So those are the things that I do. I'm, I'm a university professor, but actually what I do... Uh, when I'm not teaching university, is I'm an engineer. And I work for an engineering company, and we design water and wastewater plants all around the world. And we also do transportation, we do roads, we build schools, we build hospitals, we do all kinds of things like that. The name of the firm is called IBI. And so for most of my life, I've been involved in, in engineering. My PhD work was in water treatment. So uh, this is really a fun project for me. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Global Water Challenge and what that's all about. Oops, that was MVNU calling. <laughs> Too late. Um, and so what I want you to do is turn in your packet, if you would please, to the Global Water Challenge section on page 7. This is the, these are the learning uh, standards that are going to be addressed. Um, rocks, minerals, soils, cycles and patterns of earth and moon, and earth systems. Basically, this is an earth science kind of uh, um, experiment and project. And then on the math, we'll be talking about uh, geometry, uh, numbers, and quantity, and some statistics and probability, perhaps. And then these next generation science standards, that you can look through those. These have not been adopted by the state of Ohio, but they are, uh, they are uh, worthy uh, standards to look at. And we'll be looking at those um, in this project. So if you can turn uh, further in your packet to the description of the water, which is on page, 29. I'm sorry, what is it? 20, 29. 29. Well, you have it memorized. I've gone through it a couple times. That's really good. Well, thank you. Um, uh, it's close to there anyway. It might be right ahead of it. That might be, yep, go forward. Yeah, so I think it's 27. On, not on 29 here. Uh, okay, yes, on 26. Global Water Challenge, Rules and Specifications, that's what we're going to talk to uh, about today. So first, um, we'd like to just talk about the goal of this project. Um, we're going to be designing, you're going to be designing, a household water treatment system. Okay, so in your notes, 
The next thing I'm going to put in here. See, I'm taking notes along with you. I've learned as a professor, if I take notes, then the students take notes. If I just put something on the board, they don't take notes. So this is the next thing. I'm going to put my name here. And I'm a, I'm a PE. Anybody know what that means? That's a professional engineer. So one of the things you're going to be doing during this project is you're going to be ta uh, researching careers and careers in, in water treatment and environmental technology, environmental engineering. And so um, a, a professional engineer is um, it's kind of like a, almost like a, a, a trade uh, in that when you do engineering, anybody in here interested in engineering, by the way? Anybody interested in engineering? Okay, when you do engineering, you uh, start out doing what you're doing right now. You end up in a, uh, hopefully in a good four-year engineering program like Mount Vernon Nazarene University. Uh, great program we're starting out. We just, by the way, we just hired a, a wonderful new faculty uh, from Geneva College. He's great. His name's Dr. Chi. Amazing man. And so we're really getting our engineering program together. You go through a four-year engineering program and, and you make it, uh, hopefully. And if the Lord's called you to that, you'll, you'll make it through there. And then you work for five, you take a test called an FE exam. And if you pass that Fundamentals of Engineering exam, you work for five years as an engineer, under an engineer, and then you take a test called the PE test. And if you take that and pass it, you're a licensed professional engineer, and you're allowed to practice engineering in the state of Ohio, and all the states have that in, in the country, and Canada as well. So I'm licensed in several states, including Ohio. So that's what I do. I'm a PE, and you can call me Dr. Tom. So I just gave you a little bit of, uh, of free information about your research on careers in water treatment. Okay, and so what we're looking uh, at today is design of a household water treatment system. And I think, believe in the packet, that's called a... HWT. HWT. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's referred to in the packet as a household water treatment system. Okay, and so the goal is to, to uh, design an effective and efficient household water treatment system. And we're going to, you're going to be given some water on the day of the competition. We're going to give, uh, provide you some water, some dirty water, and we're going to pour that through your system and see how you do. So um, before we get started uh, talking about this, I have some, some things I'd like to do this. So I have some little, little things I want to show you. These are examples of polluted water, and we're going to pass these around. This one here, <clears throat> this is out of Dry Creek. Uh, actually, there was a bunch of leaves and dirt in the creek. And you can see, and I've labeled on the top, this water is polluted, okay? So what, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to treat water, um, we're trying to treat polluted water. And to be able to drink it. That's our goal. The first water uh, I'm going to pass around is, is creek water. So I'm going to take a look at that. Kind of pass them kind of quickly. All right. Now, creek water, can you, somebody raise your hand and tell me what might creek water be polluted by? Yes, ma'am. Well, it could be polluted with dirt. Would okay. Be a big one. If it's a relatively clean creek, it might be dirt. Um, however, though, if it's close to a factory, it could be filled with a bunch of chemicals. Okay, it could be chemical. Okay, that's good. Well, I think you did a good job with that. Um, there's uh, This creek water could be polluted with, with uh, what we're going to call a particulate matter. Uh, particulate matter. Or, that just means particles. Okay, particulate matter. And that could be anything. It could be leaves. That could be uh, soil. Um, by the way, uh, we, we, we call it soil in science, right? Actually, in construction, we call it dirt, and in science, we call it soil. So, uh, particulate matter, it could be polluted with uh, chemicals, like you said, if it's near a factory. But what else, what other chemicals get in our creeks? Yes. Did you raise your hand? Hmm? Trash. Trash, yeah, some trash could get in there. Um, what other chemicals might end up in our creek, though? How about agricultural? Okay, I have a farm, and um, if we spray pesticides or something, those can end up in a creek. 
So an agricultural or an industrial, particular matter, chemicals, industrial. Uh, and there could also be um, uh, pollution from people's septic tanks and stuff, right? Um, sewage could be polluting creeks. So where is that creek sample? Is that going around? Okay, the second example, um, this. This came out of uh, a kitchen and laundry. Okay, these were dirty clothes and dirty dishes being washed. So kitchen and laundry. Kitchen and laundry. Can we pass those around? What do you think might be in kitchen and laundry water? Yes, yeah, sir. Lint, maybe? Some lint? Okay, so maybe some, some, uh, some uh, um, uh, like fabric or, again, particulate matter. Particulate matter. So, such as lint. And uh, lint and, uh, and, and dirt. Things like that. Okay, what else? Yes? You can probably also find some bleach and soap in it. Bleach and soap, okay. Yes, how about you? Well, you were going to say soap? Yeah. Okay, so soap. So, uh, and, uh, and, and, and ke other chemicals. I'm going to put in here chemicals. Okay. All right. The next sample I'm going to pass around. Where are my samples? Where's the creek? Where's, where are they all ending up? Did you guys get the creek sample yet? Um, I think we have a creek sample. Okay. Is it still going around? Make sure everybody sees it. The next sample... Um, is I'm not going to tell you what this is, so uh, you can pass it around. That's actually toilet uh, dirty water. But it's fake toilet dirty water, okay? I wasn't going to tell you that. But what I was going to tell you is I was going to take the lid off of this and, and eat the, uh, the chocolate that's in there. And I thought it would, it would eat all, it was really gross. Now this is uh, actually, uh, one of my daughters made some chocolates and, and they're, uh, they're, they're really, uh, they're in the freezer. And uh, that's water with yellow food coloring in it and a piece of frozen chocolate, okay? But I think you all know what that's supposed to simulate, right? That's pretty gross looking, isn't it? Okay. So, um, toilet water. And uh, by, uh, we, we have some, what do you think is, uh, <laughs> well, we'll just say biological. Um, because um, did you know when um, um, actually uh, waste is dangerous uh, because it has uh, there are viruses and there are bacteria in in, in waste. Um, when you're sick, when somebody's sick, almost a hundred percent of what they excrete is that uh, is that uh, disease. So that's why uh, you hear of diseases like cholera. People all around the world die of cholera. Why is that? It's because their waste gets, their drinking water gets contaminated with their waste. Okay, and this is a really serious situation. We need to keep our waste separate from our drinking water. Or we need to treat our waste so well that it's okay if it gets into our drinking water. And that's really what this is all about. Okay, this is all about making sure that we don't get our waste, you know, our toilet water, in our drinking water. So viruses and bacteria are very dangerous, and they can kill. They can kill us. They can cause. They can make us very sick. They can cause dysentery or you know, intestinal problems, uh, cholera, uh, and other uh, waterborne diseases. Waterborne diseases. Okay. Now, this, I'm going to do a little experiment for you here. This is some um, sugar. Some sugar. So this is, this is water. See how nice and clean that water looks? It looks very clean, especially compared to that last one that's going around. Right. I think that, that those people just saw the toilet water one and they yeah. laughed. I know, but did you see they walked and they saw the toilet water and then they, they laughed. I think they, they thought they didn't want to have anything to do with this class. So, yeah. No, I'm just, they were kidding. I think they were here for another one. 
Okay, I'm going to put this sugar in here. And you might say, wow, that's really yum. If you put some food coloring in there, you could drink it, turn it into Kool-Aid, which is all Kool-Aid is, by the way, is sugar and some food coloring. Now, I'm going to mix this up. What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? It will. It will dissolve. That's right. It's going to dissolve, which is pretty exciting. dissolving completely. Now, is this water polluted? Is this polluted water? It doesn't look very bad. You know? Doesn't even taste bad. How is it polluted? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good point. Yes, I mean, I guess if you drank too much sugar, uh, but <clears throat> this is such a small amount. Yeah. It's that. It's that's. Uh, now, why would this be bad to put into, like, a creek? Hmm, I threw you off. You were going to say something, weren't you? What were you going to say? Okay, that's right. You're right about that. You're right about that. What makes it not fresh water? There's something in it, right? Now, here, I'll ask you guys a question. What would happen if we set this out uh, outside and just left it there for a week? No, it, it probably won't. Yes? Uh, the water would evaporate, but the sugar would stop. Well, what if I left the lid on? Yeah. It might, but it probably will stay dissolved, yes. And the bacteria would be able to grow because they would live off the sugar in the water and the sun would help them grow with the heat out Wow, there. that is a great answer. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Now, bacteria wouldn't be able to live without the sugar in there, right? Because they would have no food to eat. Bacteria are just like we are. They, they eat food, go to the bathroom, live and make more of themselves and die. They, but they do it really quickly. And so what would happen is bacteria would start to grow in here, and it would grow, and it would grow, and it would get all green and stinky and nasty, right? This is a different kind of pollution. Pass this around. This is called biochemical oxygen demand. This is is that um, um, is that uh, uh, I call it substrate. Remember, you're all supposed to be taking notes here. you have some food or substrate in the water, bacteria will consume that substrate. And you know what else bacteria need? Like, remember I said they're just like us? They need to eat and they need to breathe. They need oxygen. And there's dissolved oxygen in water. And the bacteria take the dissolved oxygen out of the water. And when that happens, uh, other things aren't able to live in the water, like fish and stuff like that. And water gets, gets really bad. So... Um, Biochemical oxygen demand, by the way, that was in our that was in our um, sugar water. Okay, and my last sample. Um, by the way, uh, there are other there are other chemical pollutants. I think we talked about the creek water, the chemicals and stuff. Um, this last water, uh, you can't see anything in this, but it's hard water. Who knows what hard water is? We live on a farm. You know, hard water. What's hard water? It's when they fill like metal in the water. Metal in the water. Okay. What? What do you? Like bare metal. 
minerals in the water, but I don't see any minerals in there. Where are they? They're dissolved in the water, right? They're dissolved in the water. Now, hard water won't hurt you, but it hurts other things, like it, it makes your uh, pipes, uh, the scale forms on your pipes in your house, hot water heaters, especially when you boil hot water, the minerals come out of the water, and they make scale on in your hot water heater and stuff like that. And so hard water is, is, is a problem, but it's not a dangerous problem. So the last category, I'm just gonna put hard water. That's funny because water really isn't hard. Well, if it's frozen, I guess it's hard. Throw a piece of ice, throw an ice cube at somebody. Wanna pass around the hard water? Okay, in the hard water, we call this aesthetic. Aesthetic. Uh, aesthetic um, um, issues. So there's hardness, which is uh, dissolved minerals, such as calcium and magnesium. Also, there are uh, taste and odor on, on the, there's also uh, taste, taste, odor, and color issues. Okay, so these aren't really bad, but you can have water that um, <coughs> is kind of discolored. It might be a little kind of brown. That's really annoying, but it can be it can be clean, safe water, but it can just have some color in it. Sometimes it's hard to get certain dyes and stuff out of water, like from leaves and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> odor, sometimes there's certain compounds that make odor smell and taste bad, but they really they really aren't bad for you. Okay? So those are taste and odor issues. So this is um, this is your objective to, re to treat polluted water. Okay? That's your objective. Um, treat polluted water. These are the types of pollutants that you might have <clears throat> in water. Okay, everybody got that? Are we are we good? All right. So I don't have anything more in my box, and I think I'm gonna put my box back here and repackage my study polluted water samples. Now we're gonna give you some polluted water. At the end of this competition, we're going to pour it through your treatment device. And we're going to see if you can take out pollutants. But what we're focused on, um, this project focuses on, on two parameters. Okay. Parameters. What's a parameter? There it is. Like the outside of a circle? Is that a parameter? That's perimeter. What's a parameter? something you measure. Um, two things to measure. And these are, these are important things. Um, um, one is, um, is um, physical, and we call it suspended solids. particulate matter. Okay. And suspended solids is measured in, uh, well, we won't talk about that now. It's met, well, why, why not? By the way, this is a college level class. I don't know if you guys know that. Did you know that? This is, this is, this is a college level class. So you're doing really well. And um, so if things seem a little bit hard, that's because this is a college level class. Uh, this is measured in uh, measured by what we call turbidity. Turbidity is uh, is when um, you look at water and it's cloudy. Okay, and we can actually measure that turbidity. The second thing uh, that this uh, study focuses on is biological. Okay, the biological is um, is um, what we call disin is, is disinfection.
Okay, and, and what this does is we want to make sure no um, harmful uh, microorganisms are in the water. Okay. <clears throat> and this is measured by um, what we call a total coliform test. Okay. Now we don't. Uh, we're not going to be able to to use to do a total coliform test. So instead, we're just going to measure um, um, chlorine residual. The um, okay. Here's something that we know that when we treat water. Um, with chlorine, if there's chlorine left in the water, um, then we know that it's killed all the microorganisms because chlorine kills microorganisms. The trouble is it also kills us. So we have to be careful about how much chlorine we use. Chlorine, um, in fact, in large water treatment plants, which I've worked in before and I've helped design, you get chlorine in very large uh, Ton cylinders, and when those cylinders leak, the yellow cloud of chlorine gas um, comes out, and, and it will kill you very quickly. So chlorine is dangerous; it's toxic. It's also it's toxic to microorganisms. That's why we like it because it kills microorganisms. But we have to be very careful that we don't use too much of it, or that we don't consume too much of it because it is toxic. So these are the two things that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at physical and biological. Okay, and we're going to measure that. We're going to measure these two things. Now, if, we, if you look in your kit, uh, you can see that um, the evaluation, let's look at page 27. You'll be evaluated by a clean appearance. So a flashlight, okay, let, tell me, um, who can answer me that on page 27, number one, clean appearance. Which one of these parameters is that measuring? Yes, sir. Physical? Physical, why? Because um, it's talking about like a flashlight will be shown through the water and if you see it with your eyes, that means that it's physical and you can hold it. But like biological is smaller and you can see it with a microscope. Okay, but yeah, that's 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 that's, that's pretty good. Physical the physical parameter is is the actual stuff in the water. Uh, like uh, solid material. So we're going to be measuring, the flashlight's going to be our way of measuring turbidity, how cloudy the water is, right? And so that's what that's going to measure, the flashlight. And I think, um, actually, uh, Rory, I may be able to get a uh, nepho nephilometric turbidity unit just here, fine. Yep. Uh, which would measure in more precise terms uh, the, that parameter. So we'll work on that. Uh, the next thing is how quickly can the water be produced? Uh, now chemical level. Okay, what we're going to do with the chemical level, what do you think number three measures? Chemical level. Yes? Biological. Okay, and why is that? Because um, it, would, like, it would be trying to see how much microorganisms could, like how, how many microorganisms could survive. Right, right. Now, the, the way, and I don't know if we can pull this off uh, the day of the test, but there's a test called a total coliform count test where we take some of the water and we put it in agar, which is kind of a jelly that microorganisms can live on, and we incubate that and we see if anything grows. Okay, so that's the actual way to test for microorganisms. But we know that if we can measure chlorine in the water, if, if you, you put chlorine in the water and you let it stand and there's still some chlorine left after a period of time, like five minutes, we know that it's killed all the microorganisms. So chlorine residual is kind of a surrogate or a substitute way to measure for microorganisms. We assume that there are none if we can measure chlorine. Does everybody understand that? All right. So there are other ways to kill the microorganisms without chlorine. In fact, my, my research area is using electromagnetic radiation like ultraviolet light and sunlight to actually kill the microorganisms instead of chlorine. And that can work too. So in that case, you'd measure there'd be no chlorine residual, but there, there would be no microorganisms. And the only way to find that out would be to do this test. Uh, but we're not going to do that. In fact, we might, actually. I'll see what I can do about that too, okay? Um, are you
filming me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you have, uh, have permission? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, this, the last thing is a taste test. And guess who will be the taste tester? Me. I'll be the taste tester. So you better have good water because I don't want to taste something like that yellow water over there, okay? Um, so I'll taste the water. And uh, that measures... Um, that measures this um, uh, when we say aesthetic issues. Uh, actually, I should, I should, yeah, the hard water, aesthetic issues. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put that here. Aesthetic. Okay, aesthetic issues is uh, it's going to be taste, uh, odor, color. Okay. And you know that you really do taste this, and, and uh, that's an actual uh, uh, actual water treatment testing uh, method. There's a book called Standard Methods for the Examination of Water, and one of those methods is actually to taste water and see what it tastes like. And there's a whole chart, and, you know, you fill out. So we'll, we'll taste your water. So that's what we're going to do. But how are we going to get this done? So we know what's going on now. We know what polluted water is. We know we have to treat it. We know these are the things we treat it for. How do we accomplish this? How do we treat water? Does anybody know how we treat water? Anybody? Okay. This is actually uh, uh, not that easy of a thing. Okay, so I start at 1 and I'm done at 145. Okay, I'm going to draw something on the board um, quickly now. I'm going to put my C. Okay, when we treat water, uh, there's, there's kind of two groups. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just continue on this. Maybe I'll just do it on here. Okay. Because I can't get this to work for some reason. some notes and I'm going to do it kind of fast, okay? Everybody all right? I'm a college professor, right? So this is this is the fun part of college. Right? You take notes really fast. You guys ready? 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 Okay. There's, there's, um, there's what we call um, uh, home or residential. And then there was what we call community. These are the two types of water treatment, or, or how, how to, this is all called how do we treat water. Okay, we're going to focus on this. So, but uh, who lives in a city? Who lives in a city? Anybody live in a city? Who lives in the country? Okay, who has a well? Okay, so people have wells. So what we're talking about here is wells. Uh, in single wells, and what we're talking about here for a community is that you have a, a water treatment plant. Okay, I'm going to quickly talk about a water treatment plant. All right, I'm going to just really quick, and then I'm going to talk about wells, and then we're going to talk about your project. In a water treatment plant, you have source water. You have source water, and that's a river, a lake, or well field. By the way, over spring break, I'm going to the Dominican Republic to help us for some water treatment issues there. And then over spring break, we're going down to Central America, and we're going to help with some water treatment issues there. So I'll be able to show you all some pictures when we meet again about what we did there, okay? And we're gonna do these very same things you'll be doing, all right? <coughs> we take our source water and 
we pump it, this is a symbol for a pump, we pump that to, uh, to what we call preliminary treatment. And here is basically some screens. And it removes the big stuff. It removes debris, like leaves and stuff like that. Okay. And after we go through here, uh, we uh, typically um, remove particles. So this is what we'll call this. Um, <coughs> at this point, um, we'll call this uh, flocculation. where we add alum to the water and we stir the water up. And what alum does is, this might be a, an alum particle. Alum attracts other little particles to it and, and, and it gets you end up with kind of a bigger particle, and, and then those bigger particles kind of attract to each other, and pretty soon you end up with, with the particle you kind of see, and this is called flock. And then we do sedimentation. We put all that water in a tank, and we let the alum Block, settle out, and you have clean water on top, or clear water. And this alum sludge you dispose of. Okay, everybody get that? Pretty cool, huh? So, what do you do? Get water out of a river, run through some screens. Put a big tank, dump some alum in there. Alum's like a white powder. And what that does is kind of sticky. And what it does is the cloudy stuff in the water all kind of sticks together and forms kind of uh, clumps called flock. And the flock settles out and we have clean water. Then what we do is we say we have filtration. In filtration, we have gravel. Then we have sand. I don't hear any sand beans. <laughs> okay, now I hear some sand. So let's hear some sand, right? Okay, good. Sand. And, and we put the water on top of this filter, and then on the bottom, called an underdrain, we really, really take out any particles out of the water. And here's the thing, is particles, bacteria tends to be on particles. So if we take the particles out, if we take the cloudiness out, we're probably taking the bacteria out. Do you understand that? Because bacteria tends to be on the particles, or that it tends to be the particles. So by taking the particles out, we've taken the bacteria out. So at this point, we have pretty clean water. This is pretty clean water here. But we want to make sure. So we have disinfection. So we add chlorine. And we let, we let that stand. Give it some contact time. And then this is our clean water. This is now drinking water. And what I might do for you all is I'll see if we, we can get us to uh, tour a water treatment plant at the end of our uh, at the end of our project. Okay, uh, Mount Vernon right right down the road has a water treatment.
treat the plant, they do this very thing. Okay, now there are some other ways to treat water, but this is the main one. Yes? So the water treatment plant's right by the middle school. Okay. School. Right, it is. So we can go over there, and I know them very well. Okay, so what about wells? Okay, so for wells, you have a, a deep well. Hopefully you have a deep well. And you have a pump inside this well at the bottom. And in Ohio, the ground freezes, so we need to run that line underwater. And, and typically, this comes into uh, your house. And what you usually have is a pressure tank. And you might have Who has a little particle filter on their well in their house? You do? You do? Do you have a little particle filter? Big blue. Yeah. <laughs> take it off and put a cartridge in there. That's taking out the particles, right? Particle filter. Sorry if you can't read my writing. This is a pressure tank. This is a particle filter. And some people, who has a water softener? Water softener? Okay, you have a water softener. Okay. One thing that um, in this treatment plant, um, if we want to add water softener, you also could do lime, add lime for softening. depending on if you have hard water. Usually well water is very hard because this might be 100 feet deep or so. And it's in rocks. It's in limestone. Now why don't we have any disinfection on this? Yes? Disinfect? Yeah, it's so, yes. Like, I think, like, since it's underground, mm -hmm. Sometimes, like, the, the rocks will pick up some of the bacteria in the filter. It, that's way. right. It takes a long time. It takes a long time for water to go down here. Years for water to make it from the top to the bottom as well. There's, there's soil. There's rocks. There's other formations. There's clay. There's things like that. And the water is so purified by the time it gets down here that it usually doesn't have bacteria. Now sometimes we end up with bacteria in our wells, don't we? And what do we dump in our wells every once in a while? Some chlorine, just to make sure we clean it out, okay? Sometimes people's wells are polluted, okay? Now I wanna tell you something, around the world there are many people that have water that's totally polluted and they have to boil their water to make sure all the microorganisms are killed because they don't have chlorine either. If you boil the water, it kills the microorganisms. Let me tell you something. There are people in Knox County. Who's ever heard of Mount Liberty? Who's ever heard of Banks? Um, Jellaway? Um, Bladensburg? Uh, these small little places? The, the houses are so close together, the wells are shallow, and there's no sewage treatment, and there's no water treatment, and the wells get influenced by people's septic tanks. Okay, and we see that in this county. In fact, I'm working on a project right now with the county commissioners to try to uh, get some funding to go into those communities and provide wastewater treatment. So at least we get the wastewater treatment out. Remember what I told you? You don't want to mix the two things. <coughs> so this is not just a global problem. This is a local problem. And we are blessed, most of us, to have clean water. But I'll tell you what, it's something that a lot of people in the world don't have. So I'm really excited for you. What you're going to do, everybody got this? Everybody got this? What you're going to do is you're going to take, you're going to get a two liter bottle, okay, and you get a, you get a bottle. Rory, what are they going to get? They're going to get a bottle, coarse sand, <coughs> fine sand, gravel, coffee filters, alum, 
and I believe you have also provided test strips, chlorine, chlorine, and a glass stirring rod and a glass beaker. And that's it. That's all you get. And you got to make clean water out of that. This is going to be a challenge. You're going to do a lot of research. You can email me or call me and ask me questions. Okay, so I'm your, I'm your professor for this project, and I'm really happy. This is really fun for me, and I think just looking around the room that, um, that we're in pretty good shape as a society, and I'm really thankful for that. So you uh, young folks are going to be, um, you know, taking care of us old folks and everybody else, and so I'm excited about that. So I hope you learn a lot. I hope you have fun. It's going to be a great project. You can, um, you can look to me. You can email me with questions. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to get this two-liter bottle, and you're going to figure out how to use a two-liter bottle and the rest of the stuff you get and turn that into a water treatment system. All right? So, and we're going to, uh, we're going to evaluate you based on, we're going to give you some water when you come test day, and you're going to bring your apparatus, and we're going to pour the dirty water into it, and hopefully clean water will come out of it. All right? And so I hope you have fun. And I can't wait to see you guys again. And uh, maybe I'll send you all out an email, some pictures when we go to Dominican Republic, show you uh, some, some pictures about that. And so uh, I wish you well. And Roy, do you have any other thoughts uh, for them? I was going to say, nothing on our end. If your team is not yet registered, make sure you get registered so you can pick your kits up. If you need to do that, see me before you leave because Dr. Tom was nice enough to help us out with getting internet access to do that. Are they going to get that at school? Uh, d depends on where you are.